Welcome back to the channel everybody. Sun is shining, it's currently 80 degrees. I think in a couple hours time the fields should be fit to go. I hope, maybe not until tomorrow, but we're sure gonna try it. Uh, got a couple of little things left to do, changing the oil, and I gotta move these rims out. And uh, you know, being an orange guy, I got some of the other guys that like other colors that watch my channel. I figure I'd uh, show you how easy this is. <laughs> so, first thing, impact. Loosen up all of these. If you go the right way. Loosen them up all the way around. The wedges, I just move that bottom wedge down to that mark right there. And then I get in the tractor and I put it in reverse and I swing this power shift power adjust wheel out um, so I'm gonna go ahead and loosen these up and then uh, start the tractor and set you guys up so you can watch this happen now what I'm looking for on this center line is about 29 to 31 inches um, that's about average for a 16 or 18 inch plow uh, I believe that that goes across the brands it's gonna be pretty close to where you're gonna want this to ride for a sub mounted plow all right so I didn't want to work on the gravel so we're going to go up here on the pavement. Tighten these back up with the impact. Put the other stopper right here. I'm gonna measure it again, but uh, I should be right where I need to be. So that's what we're looking for. 29 to 31 inches. Right on the mark. All right, so now that I got that set, my next step was setting the lift arms. Um, general rule of thumb, if you're going to eight foot or eight foot eight inches deep you're looking at uh first step is drop this one all the way as long as it can go measure that make this one two inches shorter than this one um that's the setup like i said for eight inches deep um now i'm looking for six inches deep so i set this one to be an inch and three quarters shorter than this one uh, the next I'll show you, I'll get hooked up to the plow, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so here I am pulling into my field. Um, last year I plowed this field north and south. This year I'm going to be plowing it east and west. Um, I, I tried that last year. Dad said that was how Grandpa always plowed it. Um, I, don't, I seem to like plowing it this way a little bit better. Uh, you see the hill kind of goes down that way. It's not very much of a hill, but I guess, you know makes more sense to me to plow it across the hill instead of with the hill. Um, now, usually you're looking for your dead furrow that you left last year. Um, it means that I plowed this a different way last year. I'm just going to build a land out here um, about where I remember the dead furrow being two years ago when I plowed it, if that makes any sense. But I feel my dead furrows in so good that generally you can't find them anyway, so... And I'll be showing you guys how we do that as well. But I think this looks like a pretty good spot to start. Okay. So after I build this land, which I'm going to do is I'm going to go down. And uh, we'll have a dead furrow on this side. We'll come back down and we'll have the furrow on this side as well. And then that there in the middle is a land. I'm plowing it together. And then we just keep going around, plowing it together. And then... Uh, once we get down here to where this this gap is too big where we're wasting time coming around then we start over at this side and we start plowing them apart see what I'm getting at so then we're plowing I mean we're coming together but we're plowing them apart at that point so then you'll end up with a dead furrow in the middle here and a dead furrow in the middle of the field here somewhere roughly um, and then when we get to that I'll show you how to fill them in 
but um, I need to set this land and then once I get that furrow planted um, or the furrow placed then we'll come and we'll look at the plow and I'll show you guys how to set the plow in the furrow. Another thing I'd like to mention I, I'm using uh, what's considered a hillside plow so you get on a hill and you can just move that plow over. Um, now I should have measured stuff and figured out where the, the center of the hook is and did some things but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this without any weights and I'm going to get that to where the tractor is pulling straight it's not trying to pull me towards the furrow and uh, I'll kind of mark it from there I'm just going to go with kind of the feel of the tractor you want that set to where the tractor is pulling straight you know you're not fighting left and right um, and we're going to get that bottom is going to be cutting you guys will see but that's just another thing usually that's a different adjustment you got to look in your plow to find the center line of where everything needs to be on the plow so it really helps to have a book there's a fun thing about plowing you see my tires and i'm not no hands on the steering wheel just turn tires into the barrel there and off you go i wish this was turning over a little bit better but as we're shining up as you see it's getting better um, I gotta show you guys how to make sure the plow is right, but if you look back there, I got a six inch deep furrow roughly. Um, maybe I can go a little bit deeper, I think. But then uh, you notice how the, the side is rounded. That means that my plow isn't level this way. So I'll uh, get out here after this pass and show you guys that. Okay, so I stopped here in the furrow. I apologize for the wind, but um, I stopped here in the furrow and I'll show you a couple of things that I've got wrong with my plow. Okay, so first thing, if you can see it or not, I'm not sure, I can't tell on the camera, but the plow should be level with the ground right now. And it's up in the back here, okay? So now if you look at my furrow here, we're not cutting, look at this, okay? And the furrow is a little bit off kilter. So we're not set level for the depth that we're plowing at. Okay, another way to know is look at this landslide right here. You see how this is up out of the furrow here? Not sitting down in the furrow? That means that landslide is up too high and we just got the plow off kilter and we're not getting the cut right. So I'm going to adjust that down. And we're going to go a little bit and we're going to see what that does. Another, ooh, hit my head pretty hard. Ugh. Okay, another problem that I'm having, I'm not exactly sure what, because I've adjusted this thing out. I've got to adjust this and get this right. Sometimes it rides out here, sometimes it doesn't. So I might have to figure that out. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that. As you see, my furrow is half ass clean, and that's also why I'm getting kind of a funny cut here on the side, not getting a nice edge. So we'll adjust those two things. Um, I'm going to start by shortening this up. This one always stays as long as it can be. Never mess with that one. You always adjust it on this one over here. So I'm going to shorten it up a little bit. Um, and I'm going to, he's got the tools, so I'm going to wait for him to catch up and I'm going to adjust this coulter. Oh, actually, I'm, I got to go to the end because I don't want to pull out. I'm going to go to the end, I'm going to adjust this coulter, I'm going to put it down here and we'll see how we're doing. All right. If your furrow looks like this, guys, let's see how jumping on my old clumps. Um, your coulter isn't set right. It's too close to the shin on your back bottom. Well, on all the bottoms, probably. This one in particular is the back bottom. I could not get it to adjust correctly. I'm gonna have to go back to the farm when we finish this field and put some heat on it. Pardon me, Tom, pardon me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, so we plowed there, then I come up here and I built another land so that now we can plow those, come into each other, and then up here I built another one and then we will plow this apart. See what I'm getting at? I mean, if we're coming together, but the plow is plowing them away from each other. To see what I'm getting at? So instead of having a land in the middle, I'm going to have a dead furrow here. So you plow the, the land together. So 
so if I was using this land, you would be plowing together. But if I was going down here, you're plowing them apart. Okay, so what I was talking about in the field with this coulter, um, I need to be able to, to spin this shaft right here and bring this coulter out farther. Now, the problem with it that I was having is I can't get this collar to spin, and it's at the stopper here. So when I spin that out, this coulter, you know, comes in, and I couldn't get it set right. So I'm here at the shop. Um, I got a big hammer and some heat, and we're going to make that move really quick. So then I'll show you what a clean furrow looks like. So that's a little better, eh? Like I said, I moved that culture away from the shin to make it do that. Nice and smooth it is. I'm not bouncing around. The plow's not bouncing around. Oh, wow. Just like on the pulling track. There's Tom with the 301. And here I am with the 426. Alright, so I've got this plow to where I'm pretty darn happy with it. My landslides are a little wore out. Now, that landslide should be about a half inch from the bottom of the furrow. Um, here on this hillside, it's even worse than what it is, but I don't have any flap to stop on right now to show you. Um, but you can see landslide riding, slide riding about right here. Um, like I said, that should be about a half inch off the ground if it's not wore out. You can see I got that coulter. Still getting a little bit, um, but it's doing pretty good. Uh, hard to tell sitting here on this hill, everything looks funny, but you can kind of see how the plow is sitting more level with the ground than the tractor is. And that's just adjusting that right one. Like I said, you never adjust that left one, only the right arm. And then once you get the depths, you gotta figure out how deep you need to set that to get the left plow level this way, which I have done all of that. Now, my landslides are a little worn out. Here I am trying to show you how to set a plow right with worn out landslides. But as you can tell, it's doing a good job. Uh, next spring, that'll be the project. All right, so I figured this would be a good time to show you guys uh, an example of a plow that's not pulling from its center line. Because I've got this uh, hillside on here, so I can just change where my center line is. Um, on the hill here, I, you can see I'm hill, so I'm always changing it to make sure that furrow is getting filled wherever I'm going. It's actually pretty nice for this field back here. Um, however, I can show you real quick, if I bring this plow, whoop, wrong way, over here, if you look now, it's fighting me over into the furrow. You see that? Now I'm fighting over. So the plow isn't pulling center line. So once I bring that back, now look at that. I, maybe you could even hear the engine. It started pulling easier. On the hills, that center line is going to change because the plow is going to do funny stuff. So with this hillside plow, I'm just able to adjust accordingly. That way, I'm always pulling from the center point. And mainly, what I'm listening, what I'm doing, is just listening to my engine when I'm doing it. You can hear it tugging hard. You, you, you get on the hill, it starts lugging a little bit. You just get on that lever and move it a little bit. Then you can look back and see that it's filling that furrow up pretty good. So I hope that kind of explains. You know, gets you an idea if it's pulling really hard, tugging you around, can't seem to get enough weight on the front end. Um, that's a good reason why your center line isn't correct. Okay, so I kind of wish I had a better dead furrow to show you guys how to fill in the dead furrow, but I've been using the sub mounted plow enough that I could pretty well get it filled in um, just while I'm plowing it, like you see there. Um, but you can kind of see the furrow that's here and you got, it's, it's there. 
So I'm gonna give you guys a gist of it. So basically, we're gonna put the front end of the plow down and we're leaving the back end of the plow up. Now, if your plow is set right, um, it should only hit the ground when your tire sits down into that furrow. Um, I'll leave it. I'll leave the uh, camera point back here. And you guys will see what I'm getting at. Usually, you want to go gear higher when you're doing this. Every time you change one thing, equal and opposite reaction up there. It's, it's about the best way that I can explain it. Um, you know, until you, you guys you get to, to actually using one and uh, kind of get the feel for it. But every, all in all, it's looking pretty good. We are right about six inches deep worm right there oh what I was showing you guys I'm sorry yeah we're right about six inches deep my hand there that's a good sign oh no it's looking pretty good there's another worm got another group of worms worms all over we like worms. When I got this field, you could find some, but nothing like this. That's, that makes me happy. So I'm going to keep going. 
Uh, we got a man down with the 301, blew a rear main seal, leaking all over the clutch, and then it's slipping. So, not exactly sure what's going on because it got new mains, bearings, and a new seal. So, I don't know. Have to uh, maybe we. I'm guessing we probably messed up the seal putting it in. Best I got right now without looking into it. So, I'm gonna keep going. Maybe get you guys a little footage. Thanks for watching this um, I've been kind of thinking about doing a video like this and kind of showing how I set the sub mounted plow and um, kind of the tricks and tidbits but then uh, a lot of you guys probably watch Nelson down at IP farms he recently got a sub mounted plow and has never been around one so 
kind of pushed me over the edge to kind of show how I set the plow and um, not saying that it's a hundred percent perfect but I've read that book about four times so <laughs> um, and I've learned quite a bit from my dad and uh, a few other people over the years and um, I'd like to thank everybody for watching um, we're back in business uh, you guys have seen the little clips that I've put up throughout the week here we're back in business um, the new 7045 was getting a little warmer than I like and radiator was dirty as could be and the 301 is back in the field so uh, keep an eye out for plow day video that'll be coming soon today is the day after plow day and we are all done plowing my camera will not stay focused it's driving me nuts I apologize for that um, so I'm just gonna end this video say thank you much for watching if you like this episode give it a like and a subscribe um, hope to catch you on the next one